Dr. Meadows. We move on to the Hamantash team. And it is my honor to introduce Professor Tom Layton, who is Professor of Mathematics here at MIT and serves as the head of the Algorithms Group in MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, affectionately known as CSAIL. However, he is best known for his Hamantash and study groups, which meet several times a week in Stanham. <laughs> Professor Layton co-founded Akamai Technologies, the leading online global service provider, and for this he earned recognition as one of the top 10 technology innovators, as judged by US News and World Report. But, as you're an impartial moderator, I feel compelled to raise the question of allegiance here, and I actually need someone to push number two. Thank you, Professor. I would like you to take a moment to look at the Akamai logo. <laughs> Let's see 
me how it works. <laughs> uh oh. All right, raise your hand if you're under 25. <laughs> Should I show you what's in chapter 3 anyway? <laughs> All right, well, this could be the end of my career here, but in the interest of science and the debate, let's take a look. If you're under 25, just close your eyes. If you have a small child next to you, close their eyes. <laughs> It all revolves around the Hamantaschen hypothesis, which says that if two Hamantaschen with a combined area of 90 square centimeters mate, they produce two baby Hamantaschen, and the resulting Hamantaschen family has a combined area of at least 92 square centimeters. Now the key here is 90 and 92, and the fact that 90 square centimeters of Hamantaschen gets turned into 92 square centimeters of Hamantaschen is very special. It means that Hamantaschen are not bound by the conservation laws of math and physics, and their areas can grow exponentially just by reproducing. Now, I realize that some of you may be thinking this is not possible. So I will now use mathematics to prove, for the first time ever in public, this amazing fact. So watch carefully as we turn 90 into 92. Suppose you have two hamantaschen in the form of 9 by 10 right triangles. If you bring them together, then you have a rectangle with area 90. Next, the hamantaschen slide along the diagonal so that two centimeters of each hamantaschen hang over the edge, leaving eight of the original 10 not hanging over the edge. As you can see, the dashed lines there are a little bit longer than the straight vertical lines, and so their length is a little bit bigger than two. We'll call it two plus. Now, the smaller triangles are, of course, the baby hamantaschen. And when we put them together, you see they form a rectangle with side lengths two and a bit larger than two, with area at least four. The leftovers of the parents have side length eight, and 9 plus this little more than 2, making it a little more than 11. Their area is at least 88. Add that up, and we have 92 as played. Are there any questions? I didn't think so. Now, there are several important consequences of the Hamantaschen hypothesis. For example, depending on how frisky your Hamantash are feeling, their area could double every hour. That means their area could increase by a factor of 2 to the 24 every day, or 2 to the 8,760 every year. That's a big number, and that explains why there's so many Hamantash all over the place. It also means that you have to be very careful how you store your Hamantash at night. <laughs> Be sure to store them securely in individual plastic containers, lest they start getting frisky. Now, the consequences of unsafe hamantaschen practices can be severe. Do not let this happen to you at all. The exponential growth of hamantaschen also mean that they can be used to solve world hunger. For example, this photo shows a Red Cross worker giving the gift of a pair of hamantaschen to a villager. In a few hours, there will be enough hamantaschen to feed the entire village. Now, I know there are probably some mathematicians out there, and you're probably saying, wait a minute, something's fishy here. What about Lockheed? Aren't Lockheed topologically equivalent to Hamantaschen? And so don't they have the same properties? The answer is no. Of course you can deform a Lockheed into the shape of a Hamantaschen. But as you can plainly see, when you do this, you don't get a Hamantaschen, you get a deformed Lockheed. Well, there's an even more compelling reason why Lockheed just don't compare with Hamantaschen. It is a fact, to my knowledge, that has never been disputed in the entire course of human history. Lockies don't have sex. <laughs> and who can blame them? They're shredded potatoes.